In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, essentially the best podcast you'll hear anywhere. Ever. Uh, in this episode, we answer questions that are asked from our audience uh, and questions that come from viewers just like you out on YouTube. Um, and we do that in the back half of this episode. Now, the first half of this episode, about 44 minutes long, we talk about current events and we tell stories, we bring up studies, we mention our sponsors. By the way, if you want to know where every... Uh, category or every topic that we talk about happens in this episode. You want to fast forward to your favorite part, go to mindpumppodcast.com. Everything's time stamped. But if you want to have the most fun, start from the beginning. Let me give you a rundown. So we open up by talking about the mind pump goal for the world. <laughs> it's a little lofty. It's a big goal. Gets a little esoteric, but it's from our hearts. Yeah. Then we talk about healthy supplements and how markets have moved and changed to now where people want things that are not artificially sweetened, for example. That led us to mention our sponsor, Legion. Legion makes performance supplements, okay? Supplements for muscle building, supplements that give you more energy for your workouts, supplements that can help with appetite suppressant for fat loss, uh, lots of effective products, all third-party tested. Everything on the labels is what's in the bottle, um, and they are none of them are artificially sweetened. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a cool hookup. Here's how you get the, the Mind Pump hookup. Go to buylegion.com. That's B Y. L-E-G-I-O-N dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 20% off your first order. And if you're a returning customer, you get double rewards points. Then we talked about uh, our conflicted feelings around Magic Spoon cereal. This is the cereal that has no sugar, yeah. is high in protein. It's got whey protein in it. The ingredients are not uh, crazy chemicals or toxic. It's good stuff. What's going to stop you from eating all of it? But it's also delicious, and you end up eating four boxes. Yeah. So we're a little conflicted about it. Anyhow, uh, Magic Spoon is one of our sponsors. If you want to try out a box, uh, use our discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. Get an automatic discount, or just use the code mind pump. Then we talk about the documentary on Netflix called Unhealth. And uh, there's a partner about a bodybuilder drinking... Uh, breast milk. Yeah. Ah, it's a muscle building one. Yeah, bro. Then we talk about the sauna prank we played on Justin the other day. Uh, we talk about Cardi B. Looks like she's moving up in the world and Man. interviewing candidates for president. What the world what the hell is the world Man, coming to? Dropping through? smash hits. We talk about California burning. Crazy fires going on here. Um, then we talk about the earthquake detectors um, at Google. And then we get into the questions. This is when we start answering fitness questions. First one. Does wearing a weighted vest or a hoodie help you burn more cardio, uh, more calories when you do cardio? The next question, this person says, look, you guys talk about introducing new exercises to get your body to respond. Then you also talk about practicing the same exercises to get good at them, and that's a great way to build muscle. Which one is true? I'm What confused. do we believe? The next question, this person says, do pregnant women need to change the way they lift? And the final question, this person just wants to know, what's the first thing we're all going to do when the pandemic is over? Also, this month, MAPS Performance is 50% off. This is a great full-body workout program. It uses traditional exercises and non-traditional functional movements. It's a fun workout. You build strength, stamina, endurance, and mobility. So if you want to look fit, but also be fit, you don't want to just be gym fit. You want to be fit in the, world, in the real world. MAPS Performance is the program. By the way, MAPS Performance is broken up into phases. The last phase is an explosive training phase. If you've never done proper explosive training, you are missing out. Uh, some of the results you get from that are speed, explosivity, and fast twitch muscle fiber activation for better muscle growth. Of course, this program comes with full exercise demo videos, blueprints, you know how many sets and reps and what exercises, easily accessible through your phone. Um, here's how you get the half off. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S-G-R-E-E-N. And then use this code for 50% off. Green50. That's green50 with no space. So one of the questions I get all the time whenever I'm being interviewed on, a, on another health or, or fitness podcast, I, I was wondering if you guys get this question too. It's like, what is the overarching, I guess, goal or purpose behind Mind pump, like why do you guys do what you do? Do you guys get that question a lot? 
I do not as much as I get the how the hell do four of you have not like tore each other's yeah. faces off yeah. like, like choked <laughs> each other out. That's the one I get. Yeah, yeah I, get I get it all the time. I get that one. All more. How does this work? Yeah, yeah. yeah. how's this possible? You know, you're yeah. all four equal owners. And like, you still <laughs> like each other? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we yeah we did the we signed a, an agreement early on. It was about mutual destruction, which was essentially if you ever got in a fight, we'd yeah. all have to have guns. Yeah, and oh. so we're like, yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like what happened. But I do get that too. I get that one too, though. Yeah, that is the that's a common question and. um this last uh, time I got interviewed, I really th I thought about it a lot because I know we all had similar goals as trainers, which essentially was, and this is for most trainers, I think, which is to really help the people that you're working with to help them uh, achieve a, a lifelong relationship with good health, you know, through mm -hmm. exercise, nutrition, and of course, later on, as you get more experience through other means, uh, sleep and your relationships and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but then when I think about mind pump, it's still that, right? That's still a goal. Uh, but because of the broad reach, I, th I really thought about it this time. I said, you know, it's also a little bit different because as a trainer, I was communicating to one client at a time. And as a manager, at the most, you know, aside from when I would host the big meetings or whatever, my whole staff was what, 40, 50 people. So that would be who I'd be communicating well, now we're talking to so many different people. And I was like, what, you know, what, what is really, how can I put into words our big overarching goal? Um, and then it, I, I thought of it and it really is, and I'd love your guys' feedback on this. It is to um, uh, may, bring awareness around what real total health looks like for people. So like to bring awareness around that because once people really become aware of that, then their consumer habits uh, will change the market and then change society. So what I mean by that is once people become aware of real total health and start to develop, you know, and we'll stick to nutrition, for example, that's an easy one. Let's just stick with that. Let's say somebody really becomes aware of the real health uh, properties of food, not just physiological, but how it makes you feel and the proper way to eat and balance and all that stuff. Then when they go shopping, they are going to uh, place a very strong market demand on products that will serve their total health. Mm. And so then we'll see more of a collective effort to produce high quality foods or to make foods that are maybe uh, produce them in ways that are better for the environment or advertising a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that like, just on a, on a broad spectrum and now I'm going to get a little ph philosophical but I was thinking, you know, if, if everybody, if every individual really, really uh, was truly healthy in every sense, physical, nutritional, you know, nutrition, relationships, finances, just the way that they viewed themselves, their own uh, self-image, uh, I think that would solve a lot of, you know, problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is, is that too deep? I don't, I don't think, I think it's too much to ask. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's too deep. I think it's unrealistic. I mean, it's, uh, but just, it's a good goal, I think. Well, yeah, I, I think, I, I mean, I think that was a very beautiful, what you said, and mm. probably better than how I answered that question. I think it was much simpler the way I think about it, which is, you know, each of us had our own path with, with training clients, but, uh, and over the course of, you know, a de over a decade of training clients, we reached a place where I think we would agree that we felt good that we were adding a tremendous value to any life that we impacted or touched. Um, and because of what has happened in the last decade with digital media, uh, I think we saw the opportunity to provide that same type of experience uh, that we gave individuals to the masses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and when I think about what we do, it really is exactly that. Now it's through a different medium and channel. And so we've had to kind of learn the art of podcasting and evolve with all of that. And, you know, video stuff, things that we were unfamiliar, but the, why the, it's been successful is because the, the message was the same and true since the beginning, even though we've refined it and maybe practiced it and got better at it, whatever. It was the same thing that we were teaching these individuals that we train one-on-one -on -one for an hour every single day that we are just now getting at you. And so that's what's so cool about it. Like m maybe my entire career, like we talk all the time, like, oh, we've been impacted about a thousand lives or whatever. And people challenge that. Oh, that would mathematically, you probably didn't do that many. Okay. So hundreds to a thousand or so people, you know, I fundamentally impacted over the course of, you know, two decades. 
Where now, which is so, f- say, just say, let's say we exaggerate and say it's two thousand, which is definitely more, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, <clears throat> the show r- right now, there's you know somewhere between uh, seventy and a hundred thousand people listening to this conversation. Mm. Uh, even if a fra- very small fraction of those people, uh, something one of us says resonates with them the same way it would with a client that you were helping out or potentially changing their life. I mean, the, the impact is incredible. So it's very similar to me. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's been an evolution, like you said, from what we were doing previous to this. Uh, and I think it's just, to me, I look at it as like, we're trying to filter all the misinformation out there uh, in terms of our background in health and fitness. And that's where we started. And that's the the, the root and the the base of, of you know, what we're, we're trying to kind of build off of and we kind of go a little bit left, a little bit right in terms of like other things out there that we're trying to understand. We're trying to like sift through all this misinformation, just like the rest of the population. And I, I do see now because of uh, planting these seeds of, 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 you know, somewhat of generalized truths or things that we found to be uh, repeatable. Uh, I've seen changes in consumer habits. I've seen products, you know, come that, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about. Sometimes it, it may seem like we're, we're sort of Nostradamus or, you know, predicting these trends or things like that. But really it's, it's, it, you know, th- we are one small part of impacting, uh, you know, people's decision process, yeah. you know, for their home. And so I do feel responsible for that now, especially as our voice gets louder, as the, the show gets bigger. Uh, like I, I take responsibility for that. And I, and I think we all do. I think we, we all want that uh, to, we want people to, to, to find their way towards better practices in their own household. Yeah. When I, I you know, it, cause it brings me back to this and you're, I know what you guys both mean. And I know what you meant about uh, Adam, when you said it's a real big, uh, obvious, that's the goal, right? The goal is to, to think about that. Uh, our reach is, you know, maybe big in our eyes, but it's very small uh, impact wise. When you think of all the, the people around there, but, you know, it reminds me, I remember when I was a kid and uh, this is when I first started working out and we were uh, driving to Disneyland. So I think we was like 15 and we were going th- through this neighborhood and I remember seeing like uh, this li- liquor store on this corner and then we drive along. There's another one and there's another one. And I'm just getting into fitness and health at this point. So I'm like, liquor, why are there so many liquor stores and so few health food stores and gyms? Yeah. And I did. I said that out loud. I'm like... Man, they, they they just want us to drink alcohol and be unhealthy. That's what I said out loud, right? And my mom goes, "Well, if people didn't buy it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be there." And I remember at 15 years old, I sat there quiet for the next hour thinking about that, and I thought, "Oh my gosh, if if the if because the market really just follows consumer demand. Like, imagine if all the stuff that wasn't good for us, right? Whatever you want to, whatever you think isn't good for us, cigarettes, alcohol, whatever." Imagine if all the collective efforts of the market to bring you the best, you know, you know, tastiest crappy food or the best alcohol or the best way to get high or the best way to distract yourself. Imagine if all those collective efforts were geared towards healthy things, not because the, con- the producers thought we need to do this, but rather because the consumer said, that's what I want. Mm-hmm. I want all this healthy stuff. So I want, so you're going to have to, you know, use all your capital and invest and this kind of stuff. So really the key is like, you know, our society's ever only going to be as good as what the consumer wants. Mm-hmm. That's it. And if what we want is good because we're healthy, because you can't possibly, we know this through nutrition, right? If you have an unhealthy relationship with your body, maybe you're ignorant to the, the, the potential health effects of food. So you're just not informed, or maybe you just don't care about yourself in that way, or you hate yourself, or you want to distract yourself your choices that you make are going to be based off that. So you're going to choose foods based off of your relationship with you. That's just how it works. So if people were healthy, imagine the innovation, imagine the the, the products, imagine the way the world would kind of start to move and shape. And I mean, look at it this way, okay? Cell phones 30 years ago, that's not that long, by the way. 30 years is a blink of the, of the eye, okay? So, Cell phones were expensive as hell, and almost nobody had them. Just 30 years ago, almost nobody had them. In 30 years, because the demand by consumers was so strong, so everybody was like, I want this cell phone. And by the way, now we have smartphones that have technology in them that is more powerful than all the technology. What got us to the moon. Yeah, Yeah. in one phone, right? 
in 30 years, we went from phones that in those dollars, not even adjusting for inflation, in those dollars were thousands of dollars. It was like a thousand bucks or more to get a crappy cell phone 30 years ago that barely ever worked to 30 years later, they're so available that uh, poor people have them, homeless people have them. Uh, third world countries, the, the, the penetration now is reaching in incredible levels. And there was, no, there was no decree, there was no king, there was no you know, leader that said everybody should has, have a cell phone. It was all meeting that super crazy demand. So imagine if the demand was you know, based off of our health. Like, no, I want, I, you know, I want a good relationship with food and I like to be active. I like to take care of myself. I like to help other people. I love my family. I want to be a good father. Um, I have a good financial relationship. So I, I buy things that I, I, I need that really bring value, but not ways to, you know, to distract myself. And imagine if that happened, what the, what things would look like. And so I know I'm getting like super esoteric and shit yeah. stuff out there. And I tend to do that a little bit, but that was my, where my, where my mind was, and it's, you know, I think that's an important thing. I think fitness and health, as, you know, narrow as sometimes we think it is, which is like, you know, build muscle, burn body fat, look good. Really, it's a wonderful entry point into all of that. It's easy, right? Because I can talk about fitness to anybody. Where I don't care what you believe in, what your religion is, what, your, what, what you believe in any category. Most people are interested in like, you know, looking better yeah, or whatever. So I can the, start that way. The trunk, the base of the tree. You know, it's where you start to improve yourself and then the way that you think and the decisions that you make, you know, as as a result of, you know, what you've sort of built upon. And so I, I do see how that all relates all the time. It's crazy how many parallels there are, uh, you know, once you focus in on yourself and on health and how that spawns out into all the decisions from there. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, I, I feel very optimistic, even in these weird times, right? It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a pessimistic time right now, right? I know. I think I'm trying to remove myself from that. Right. But <laughs> totally. you know, I'm so I, done with this negative bullshit. It was just uh God, was it 20, 21 or so years ago when uh I started work uh on a dairy. And at that time, um we were one of only five of all uh, organic dairies in California. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I actually, that was my first introduction to what organic was. Like I didn't even, at that, that point in my life, I had no, you know, over 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I didn't know what the hell organic anything was, right? Um, as far in relation to food. Uh, and so that was my first introduction to it. And, you know, I, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't see the, the need for it or think it was that important. I thought it was interesting that we charged a lot more for it and that there was supposedly this growing demand. But look where we're at today. I mean, we over we just talked about that new Rayleigh's that's around the corner for us up up north where, you know, it's a completely branded. Around, I mean, they're trying to keep up with Whole Foods because Whole Foods exploded so much. Yeah. But there was a time when you couldn't find organic anywhere. No. You'd have to go to like a far, a local farmer that mm -hmm. you knew that was doing that. And you had like a little community of people that were sharing. And look what it's grown into already. Dude, that they have organic sections in every grocery store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that even the, the cheapest grocery store has an yeah. aisle. Just to compete. That's what, Okay, grass-fed meat. Here's a great one. You know that grass-fed meat used to be the, the standard? That's how meat was? Mm -hmm. My, my uh, uncle, I remember this. This was probably... I started talking about grass-fed meat uh, maybe ten years ago. Okay, so and you know because I've always been in the wellness space, or not always, but about ten years ago, I really started getting in more into the wellness space, which was at that time was very different from the fitness space. The fitness space ten years ago was proteins, carbs, fats, get lean, build muscle, performance. The wellness side was hippies and <laughs> people who didn't you know yeah. wear deodorant and they talked the about smelly ones organic and you know what's best for the animal and that kind of so they were they were very separate which by the way okay not to interrupt you but i mean that you know going back to your original the way we started this conversation that was a lot of i think all of our goal at the beginning. to merge them yeah it was to merge mm -hmm. those absolutely there was, there was a, a lot of division just five ten years ago in that those if, two categories. if you went to a wellness convention 10 years ago and then you went to a fitness convention 10 years ago <laughs> two different planets yeah. and in fact you br if you brought someone from a wellness convention to the fitness convention and vice versa they would have been like it would have been like rival gangs almost oh yeah each of them would scoff at what they see <laughs> totally yeah. today they still look different but they look way more similar than they look different today yeah. one might be like high protein you know 
you know, bar, but it'll be organic, you know, well sourced. Um, and then the the wellness side might be like organic, well sourced, high protein. You know, that never happened, you know, before. So you're starting to see that 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 crossover. Um, I forgot where I was going with that, but anyway, it's it's definitely merged. Um, but back then it was oh here it is grass fed. So yeah. I remember when I got into grass fed, my I was talking to my uncle about it, and I'm like, we were at the grocery store, we're, we're buying food for a barbecue. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I wish we could find grass fed meat. And you know, my uncle's, he's older than I am, right? D- different generation. He starts laughing. He's like, why would you want grass fed? I'm like, well, it's got better fatty acid profile. It's better for the environment. It's better for the animal. And he's laughing and he goes, do you know that when I was younger and I first came to this country, when we, when you would go to the grocery store, it was all grass fed and you would look for corn fed. That's what you wanted. And I'm like, why? He said, well, because corn fed. It tastes better. It's more marbled and it yeah. tastes better. And so you know what ended up happening? Everything went grass fed to corn fed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It went in that direction. The whole market moved in that direction. Corn fed became cheaper um, and mass produced. Grass fed started to disappear. Now what we're seeing is you're starting to see market demand for grass fed. So now when you go to the grocery store, most grocery stores, you'll, li- you'll see, and it's a small section, but I guarantee it'll be bigger mm-hmm. in the next five years. You'll see a section that says grass fed. Yeah. You'll be able to pick grass-fed meats well i remember when we yeah. we we started talking about this early on when the show first started like you, the supplement look at the supplement industry how much that's changed huge remember the oh, remember yeah. the big argument off air that we got with joe donnelly when joe donnelly wanted us to push his his supplements how wrong was he by the way i know right and we went back and <laughs> yeah. forth with him and he know. wanted us to promote his supplements and i literally said we can't you have artificial sweeteners it just doesn't work with uh, with our philosophy and he made this huge yeah. argument. That's bullshit. Yeah. The market will never go in that direction. That's baloney. Consumers always want something that tastes better. Yeah, that's yeah. just bull. Yeah. And you know what's funny? The, the trends are moving. Oh in the well, direction. look at all the biggest brands. Even if they do have some stuff that has artificial sweeteners, they also have now a line that offers not, which is just to show that it's moving that direction. It's just like grocery stores first starting off with accepting. Oh shit, we're gonna have to have an organic aisle, and now you see like the Rayleigh's having an actual store dedicated to looking like a Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. So pretty soon here, you're gonna see that I think in the supplement space where everyone will move into that direction. That's what I mean. So if people just worked on making themselves, I was talking to my my godson about this, and he you know he's he's in his early twenties. And he's going through what a lot of young men in that, at, at that age kind of go through, where what used to make you happy before, you find doesn't make you happy anymore. And mm-hmm. I, I, I talked to him and I said, you know, it's because you're a young man and you now feel an instinctual need for a sense of purpose and meaning. When you're in your teens, you know, you're playing video games all day long and hang out with your buddies, not a big deal. Once you hit your 20s, I remember the feeling too. Once you hit a certain age, you're like, I, I need something more, you know, in my life. And so I talked about this to him and I said, you know, if you just – Get yourself healthy in all aspects, fitness, nutrition, spiritually healthy, whatever that means for you, um, how you are with your family. Then you'll start to find that the things you seek out will will start to match that. So really, instead of trying to find outside sources, just kind of work on yourself and then kind of watch you know, what that happens. But back to the supplement conversation, here's a great example. Our, our partner, Legion. They're a hardcore performance enhancement supplement company. You know, yeah. I would say Legion sports is sports performance. Yeah, it's not like a a wellness brand, right? His yeah, it's not like our it's not like our Organifi line. That's why we have two separate, right? Right. They're more like build muscle, burn body fat, get stronger, right? All of his products are are not artificially sweetened. He yeah. doesn't have any artificial sweeteners mm-hmm. in any of his products, and that's his. Uh, and he's going after. The people who really have hardcore goals with fitness. It never was like that before. All the hardcore fitness stuff, it was all aspartame well, or sucralose. Well, and, yeah. And, and, and people involved in sports now, they're realizing like they can do it a different way. It's not like by any means necessary get to that peak performance because they also have to think about their longevity in their career and also, you know, if if what they're consuming is also affecting them uh, in adverse ways that they haven't really like paid attention to before. Well, I always thought it was really interesting when we were when we were arguing with Joe about that stuff because, you know, this especially the sports performance community, uh, I mean, they do care. And and much of the sports performance world is always looking for the new cutting edge science. And we had already seen all the research that was coming out around artificial sweeteners. And it's like, sooner or later, you know, supplement lines will start to make these same performance supplements minus the artificial sweeteners because of the negative stuff that's coming out from them. And it's going to perform better. Like why? And then, and as a performance athlete, 
most of those people don't buy those things because of the taste of it or they care like care about that. They care about the performance from it. Yeah. I want it to be effective and I want it if I can All those little things matter. Right. If I can get the healthiest thing that gives me as good or better performance than this other product, I'm going to go that direction and to not see that writing on the wall, you know, just to me that just goes to show like how green you are in this space because it, it was obvious to us for a, a very long time that it was moving in this direction. Oh, and along those lines, because the demand for non-artificial sweetened products became so big, the products themselves, because of that, right, there's more capital that goes in, more research and development, and now the flavor that a product that is non-artificially sweetened let's say with stevia, for example, or monk fruit versus something with aspartame or sucralose, it's starting to rival the taste now of the, because now they've had enough money. And yeah, yeah. the science into, yeah, making sure it has those same kind of uh, flavors and the palate right. and everything. Well, look at the evolution of Magic Spoon. I mean, that's been, I mean, just in the that short- That doesn't make any sense to me. Just, right. the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just the short period of time that we've been working with. By the way, when I'm the first time I ever even tried it over a year ago when uh, Max Lugavere inter introduced it to us, I thought it was phenomenal. But each time they they've re-engineered and re-engineered, and it's like yeah. it just they keeps, keep iterating. Right, it's, it's it's crazy to see these new formulas that come out, and it's like wow, this tastes even more like what we used to eat when we were kids. Dude, I'm conflicted about it. It's like so uh, it's so incredible in the flavor. Now, now my son finally, my kids so much like me, right? If I tell him to do something, just like me, if someone tells me to do something. Resist, right? <laughs> like, so I, like, don't shit in the downstairs bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yes, yeah. that's mine yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only bathroom yeah. I shit in now. Gotcha. So no, I'm. So finally, we were up at the house, and you know, there was he had to take care of himself. I think we were working or whatever. So he grabbed it and ate it. Loves it, right? Yeah. But now here's why I'm conflicted. It's all he wants to eat now. <laughs> yeah. So here's the confliction. I'm like, okay, he's getting good protein. It's got good ingredients. Right. So okay, that's good. But now it's like he doesn't want to eat, uh, you know, regular foods. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, can I just have a bowl of? <laughs> well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm like, relax, dude. I'm glad relax. you brought this up that. Treat. I'm glad you brought up that you're conflicted about that because in my last Q and A, somebody was at, uh, made a comment about, you know, I thought you guys are not, you know, pro processed foods, and uh, you know that one of the things that I, I think that we've, I hope that we've made clear on this show is that no matter what, and this goes for every supplement, every anything that you consume. Uh, that we've ever talked about, we would always uh, recommend whole natural foods first. There's no substitute yeah. for that. Yeah, there really. is none. And that no. is the most ideal way to go. And, and, and why I think you say you're conflicted is because I know you, you would, you would always encourage your son to go eat whole natural foods first and not make his entire diet magic spoon. Regardless right. of what the science says that he'll be okay and it won't hurt him, it's still not the ideal yeah. no way. No sugar, high protein, therefore. Mm. Right. No, it's really- It's a healthy alternative to you know something that, uh, again, like we got to be realistic. It, you know, like, I think we talk a lot, like we don't want to be zealots about health and just always like pound people's head in with uh, you know, the whole foods only. No, that, because it doesn't work. No, no. it doesn't. It's not sustainable. I know people. And it's not authentic. No, and I, I would be lying if I if I said totally. that. And you know? I know, look, I know a lot of people in fitness and health space, these are, some of them are big influencers that you might have heard of, I'm not going to mention name names, who are so dogmatic about what they eat that they're unhealthy. They're unhealthy over it. They can't navigate the real world right. because everything to them is in this box and it has they to be live that in way. a bubble and it produces stress for them and if they go off their macros or they go off their plan ah, i can't travel i can't eat out i'm anxious about it i can only be friends with other zealots and other <laughs> dogmatic people yeah so you have to be able to navigate the real world so okay uh cereal exists in the real world the tasty cereal exists in the real world um am i gonna tell my kids Never, because here's what will happen if you do that. He'll go to college. That's all he'll eat, because that's what kids do when they yeah. go to college. I'm not under my dad's roof. Now uh, I can yeah. do all the stuff that I could. So instead, it's like, yeah, you can have some cereal. Try this one. It's a, it's, it's a little better for you, and it still tastes good. <laughs> Dude, you know? speaking of uh, zealots, and we, we, earlier in the conversation, we were talking about trying to filter through all the misinformation out there. So have you guys seen like Unhealth on Netflix yet, this yes. new series? I, I haven't seen it. I watched, um, I watched like three quarters of the breast milk episode. Oh, I mean, that was actually my favorite one so far. Yeah. So Why? It's, <laughs> so, well, it, yeah, I guess that I, sounds bad. But, what I uh, thought was interesting, and I'll, you know, I don't want to steal your, your platform here, Justin, sure. but what I found interesting about that, because I watched it too, was um, they, one of the first people they highlight in that 
is a, a workout guy, a work, guy who's trying to be a bodybuilder, amateur bodybuilder, mm-hmm. and he's buying breast milk. Yeah. So remember when we talked about it on we the show? We talked about that yeah. on the show. I like, said it was a thing. Dude, yeah. I can, if I was a marketer, I could sell the shit at a breast milk better than anything else. Think about it. Yeah. It's And here's what yeah, you do. Yeah, but the protein you get from it, I mean, it's not No, that, no, I know that. Yeah, I know yeah, that. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm not saying that it is the best. Right. I'm just saying it's easy it, to sell. It's, it's easy to sell. You yeah. could literally put up, I would put up a chart and an ad, and I'd be like, only one food on earth increases body weight by 200% yeah. in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. only one you know, form of food is made for a body that's growing at the fat. Fastest rate it'll ever grow, yeah. which is an infant. Yeah. You know, only one, and yeah. I would market it that way to people right. who want to build muscle. Yeah. So then you see that, and then like immediately after that, they play somebody that's been working at these uh, breast milk banks, and, right. and like, how incredibly difficult it is for them to acquire breast milk to get to these preemies and to you know the NICUs, and so then you feel immediately bad if you're a bodybuilder trying to buy this. And, like you know, anyways, you'll, you'll see like it's it, they want like their goals to get like 8 million something like gallons of, of the stuff. Like, I, I don't know if it's gallons or if I'm like way off with that, but uh, they're only at like six. And so like, they're not even close to their goal of like being able to service like all these like little babies. So it's yeah. like the, the bodybuilders using it is fucking like ridiculous. <laughs> so that's my point with that. But uh, what was interesting about that episode for me, like, cause um, it was just, it was just interesting to see how many different like people were kind of trying to, to, to use it. They had like, um, the, this one guy actually who had prostate cancer, who's actually from uh, Palo Alto and they highlighted, it was crazy. All this stuff was like in our backyard and the, 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 the bank was in San Jose. Um, he had prostate cancer, was doing his research. There was somebody else. Um, I don't know, somewhere in Europe, I want to say Sweden, but maybe not, but, um, found that um, basically there was there was a, a cancer fighting element to it and to breast milk to breast milk and basically how's he administering it to his prostate or does he just eat it he's just drinking it okay he, yeah i know i know i, know, <laughs> I was know. like this is getting i don't that, know it's going to get like crazy direction yeah but uh, so he didn't he didn't like the fact that there was all these like horrendous side effects to treatment, right? So that like incontinence and, you know, like it's, you can't have sex, or like all these types of things, right? Mm-hmm. And so he was trying to look at alternatives and found this study uh, and contacted the, the scientist who actually performed the study and they went back and forth. And basically like he just decided, I'm just going to try it. And so had, had somebody like, a friend of his that like had a newborn and was able to like get some of their milk and started to put it in shakes and, and, and start drinking it. And so he had like, he'd go into, you know, to his doctor to see like how much growth, you know, if it's gotten larger and whatnot. And, uh, so he actually saw right away an immediate decrease. What? Yeah. And then, and then the longer he was on it, the, the further decrease happened and then it spiked back up when, you know, his source like was no more. And so he was like, what do I do now? Because you, I mean, if you're an adult, uh, like these, these, uh, breast milk banks, they're, they're not going to allow you to, uh, to get these because they dude, need those for the babies. Dude, because Jessica's pregnant. Right. So I'm reading a lot about things around that nature, breast milk in particular. That stuff is amazing. I know. It's, it's I, so individualized. I went through the I went through the same thing when Katrina was pregnant. Up until that point, I had I don't know like very surface level knowledge of it, and then of course when when we got pregnant, it was something that I started to read more on and became fascinated with how complex it is. Not only that, it's funny you bring this conversation up because randomly last night Katrina and I probably talked for an hour about this exact topic about you know women and breastfeeding. It started I think we're talking about Jessica. Like man, you think Jessica will will make a whole year? I mean, I, because before Katrina, I never, and I, and I don't know if it's because people are careful of, they don't want to make other women feel guilty or shame because they didn't make it that long because there's so many things that could come into play that can make it very challenging. Dude, you got to be, it's a lot of work. Oh, it's, oh, no, yeah. it is beyond, it is, it, it's so much work that I, I think that it's not, uh, it's not talked about enough, and the, the women that do make it, that can breastfeed for that long of a period of time consistently, um, are superheroes. Mm-hmm. It's it, when I when I watched what Katrina went through, and you, uh, she's disciplined, she's organized, she was on top of reading everything, she was eating foods to make sure that she, her milk was coming in right, and to watch all the the hurdles that she had to overcome while also trying to manage work life. And not and being consistent. I mean, that woman was 
literally, I think uh, four hours a day is what we, we factored in, like was dedicated to pumping, you know, and having milk ready to to feed her feed the baby. Well, what's crazy is when you learn about like what we know now about breast milk, which we still don't know a lot. Right. There's still a lot we haven't learned. But I thought before I really dived in, it was just, oh, it was breast milk. It's it's designed for humans. It's good for babies. It's probably the ultimate. It's definitely the ultimate food, in my opinion, for infants. I did not realize just how individualized yes. and tailored it becomes for your baby, not just for your baby, but for your baby right now. So yeah. what, I, what I mean by that is it's different in the morning yeah. than it is in the evening. It, your, your baby's saliva signals your body to produce yes. specific antibodies yeah. or specific nutrients or mm -hmm. ratios of nutrients that your baby needs. In other words, you want to, and, and again, this is difficult. And, and uh, you know, I want to caveat, this is very difficult and many times impossible for women to do in modern societies because so many women work and it's just challenging. You have other kids and all that stuff. But literally, ideally, you want your you want the baby to get the breast milk at that moment, not frozen or not given because at that moment, your body receives a signal from the baby's saliva and then it starts to produce exactly what the baby needs right now, yeah. Yeah. which so is crazy. Trip. Oh, it's it's a trip. It's like if you get really sick, so like let's say a mom gets really sick. I, now, normally under normal circumstances, you get really sick, you, you got to keep your kid away. I don't want to give you, you the virus or whatever I got. I don't want you to get sick. It's the opposite right. the with the baby. The milk changes to protect the baby. Yeah, you don't, it's crazy. You don't want to keep your baby. The, yeah, it's the first uh, vaccine that you're exposed to. It's insane how yeah. individualized it gets and how crazy. And we knew nothing about it. And it's so funny that decades ago, companies that made formulas would literally advertise and say, this is better than breast milk. And they would tell women- That's preposterous. Give this to your baby. It's better than, uh, than breast milk. It was so, made of like soy protein. Speaking right, of right. <laughs> speaking of breast, I have a story for you guys. Oh yeah, oh, good. Um, yeah. Or actually, I actually have a story for the audience. You guys are obviously <laughs> privy to this this story, I but think I, feel, I know you're going. With yeah, this. I feel like I have to share with you with the audience what happened yesterday. So uh, l let me uh, set the table for this this story. Um, it, in the studio, uh, we have a recording area in the gym area where we, we're we're constantly shooting content. In there, we have the recording studio where we're recording. Uh, our audio show and stuff like that, the green screen. So there's kind of like stuff going on all the time. And so, you know, many times Justin, Sal, or myself have calls that are not related to stuff that's being <laughs> created right now. And so- This is great. And I don't know if I was the first one to, to piece this together, but I, I know I've been doing this for a while and I saw Justin do it yesterday is uh, I found that we have these, we have two uh, saunas in our, um, our studio. So shout out to Clearlight Saunas. Uh, and you know, I've found that like, if there's a lot of stuff going on in, in the studio, that uh, this is a quiet area, you know, right. like, that I, no, no, he's going to harass yeah, me exactly. I, in this little cube. Right. It doesn't matter how loud uh, anybody gets in the rest of the, the building and stuff. I can have a, a private meeting in there. Right. So Justin's doing this yesterday and I see him, he goes in like, he's obviously having a very serious call. I don't even know what it's regarding, <laughs> yeah. but I, I can tell it's important yeah. because it, it he's was got, serious. Yeah. He's got yeah. a notepad. He's got notes. He's, he's got, yeah. He's got his notepad. He's got his glasses. He's got his, uh, he's got his, uh, I, uh, AirPods in like, so I, I can tell he, and he was in there for like, I think almost an hour. Right. And, uh, about 45 minutes or so in, um, I come in to uh, say something to Sal. I said, Hey, um, you got to go record this. I'm going to, I'm going to fuck with Justin right now. And he's like, what, what are you gonna do? <laughs> he's like, don't, don't, don't mess with him. He's a, he's in a meeting right now. And I'm like, no, no, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be relax, relax. So, uh, you know, one of the things I like about this clear light sauna is that it, the inside of it has a uh, Bluetooth capability. So when, it's so great. I, when I go to my sauna after my workout, my phone automatically connects right to uh, the Bluetooth inside the clear light sauna. And so I know this and I know that Justin's in there on a very important phone call. Yeah. And so I decide that it would be really funny if Sal records the Justin inside the sauna where he can't see. And then I quietly pull up on my phone Pornhub, and then I link the Bluetooth to the, the song, <laughs> <laughs> which was, like, dude. So I started to hear this, right? Okay, and you were so quick, by the way. Just background, like, yeah. So like, it is a serious conversation. I'm taking notes. All like, I'm really trying to like. So my my wife and I are like going through counseling and stuff, and like trying to like work on like real serious shit. Wow, what a great time! <laughs> yeah, to do this, dude. Adam. And so then all of a sudden. <laughs> I go, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. 
and I'm just like, oh my god, dude! I, I, because I knew immediately. I'm like, dude, somebody has to be messing with me, and I just like busted out of there. Like, I was like, of course, dude, of course, what Adam's gonna do that. Adam, what the hell, dude? <laughs> the, the counselor's like, okay. now I feel a little bad because I thought it was business related. At least. <laughs> the, the counselor's like, okay, Justin, yeah. so your wife is a little concerned with your pornography. Use, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, well, no, I yeah. actually don't really watch. Porn. Oh, oh, I don't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Jesus, oh, oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> you can't even have a thirty-minute okay. call without watching this. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! god. Turn my laptop Dude, off. Speaking Sorry. Speaking of which, did you guys? Okay, so uh, did you guys watch the the music video with Cardi B? WAP. I didn't watch that. Okay, oh, I didn't. So watch so that. so I've ben, heard the song. So the only reason why I heard about it is because there was this viral video of Ben Shapiro. Talking about this yeah, music like video, breaking it down, right? But the way he broke it down, yeah, is like, like somebody who's never so had sex. WAP stands for wet ass uh, pussy. That's what it stands for. Yeah. But, but Ben Shapiro kept talking about it and would say wet ass p word, p word, p word throughout this whole conversation because he's like, you know, that's Ben yeah. Shapiro. Yeah. And I'm, it was just hilarious. I'm like, what is this p word? What is he talking about? And I'm thinking, is it that? And then I looked it up, Cardi B, and I watched the video. Oh wow! I remember in the '90s thinking, there's no way they can get worse. Like there's oh, no yeah. way music videos will get worse. Oh, I remember when my I can't, ass, dude. My, it's I the worst thing. My, my, the that worst one thing. was bad. I was grounded, and my parents uh, broke the uh, knocking boots cassette tape oh, that I had. And I re and so that's now, like good old wholesome music now. No, well, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> and I I remember years went by after that, right? And going back as an adult and going like, oh, I remember that. It totally was one of those moments in, in your childhood that like it was, stood out because I got totally scolded for it. They broke the tape in front of me. I was not allowed to listen. I was grounded for like a week or whatever. Uh, totally in trouble, right? And I went back and listened to it as an adult, and I went, "Are you kidding me? Like this is what I got in trouble for? Like there's like it's like just insinuating that the people in it had sex. Like they don't even say the word sex. Like they refer to sex as knocking boots. Yeah, you know. And the song is not that bad at all. And I'm like, oh my god, where we're we at bro, today, <laughs> bro. The Cardi B video is like I can't yeah. even believe it. Dude. Which brings me to the next thing. She's apparently moving up in the world. Did you guys Dude, know that she interviewed I, the, she interviewed Joe Biden. I <laughs> saw what in the hell. She interviewed him, dude. Bro, Why? this this probably because Kanye West went listen, to the White House and they're like, it's, what can we do on our side? Oh, <laughs> listen, let's get this the wet ass pussy girl over. This here. has to be. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I uh, hope Netflix picks it up. I hope somebody does some sort of a uh, you know docu series of this whole election year. This is going to make for great television, you know, five years from now when we look back at this this last fucking year oh, dude. of oh. just all the shenanigans that went down uh, leading up to this this presidential debate and election, I think is it just it's, it's I hope comical. it's a timepiece and it's not something that's going to like be repeated the uh, next election cycle because it just th gets worse. It's just like so terrible out there. They've just created such a shitstorm. Oh, dude, it's going to get worse. Look, it, obviously they don't care about the actual person. All they care about is how many people follow the person. Yeah, because literally Cardi B, literally, this is 100 percent true. Well known, actually bragged she bragged about drugging men and taking their money remember she was a stripper yeah, yeah. back in the day of course she's the the creator of the masterpiece wet ass pussy music video yeah. she's interviewing yeah she's interviewing the the democratic nominee for president now before that the craziest thing was kanye west Going to the White House. Yeah, we're going to out crazy. You're crazy. Right? Yeah. When, when that happened, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't even believe Kanye West. Is, and then he ran for president. I'm like, oh my God, could you imagine Kim Kardashian being the first lady? And or or like, wait till Cardi B puts her name in the oh, hat. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> my, might as well. Dude, yeah. it's it's just getting crazier and crazier. It was, and it's going to keep getting worse. I, I don't know what is more painful. I don't know if it's more painful listening to Kanye West try and talk politics or listening to Cardi B try and ask Joe Biden questions. Like, uh, I don't know did which. Did you listen to that interview? I, yes, I, I did. Oh. Oh, she did that in the interview. <laughs> she did not. Yes, yeah, she did. Right away. the best thing I've ever seen I had, to, I had to call. I wanted to call Sal right after because I know he you makes- did not. Right, right. Because, I okay, uh, you know, uh, oh, for, the, wow. for the audience so they understand this. Like, So I, out of the three of us, I still listen to like current rap, right? So yeah. I, I believe there are some decent rappers that are still out oh. there that are- Ski, that are, ski, ski. Right. And so these guys <laughs> always talk shit to me if I have it playing in my car because they think just all rap today is trash and I disagree. Yeah, I like but this stuff what, from the 90s. But one of their favorite thing to do is to always no make auto tune. The, what are you talking about the rap today is and, yeah, it, and yeah, i'm like yeah. she did it in the interview and i went oh my god 
Oh my god. That's so poetic. Oh, you know? please, like, oh God yes. help us. It was the greatest moment in, in political history, in my opinion. I, <laughs> when I was watching it and she did that, I fell off the toilet. Yeah, I was watching it while I was going to the bathroom. I felt I couldn't believe that this person was interviewing a nominee for president. Oh, it just goes to show weirdest you. Weirdest year of all time. We are I, I believe that we are now at level, I don't know, twelve of the of Jumanji. So let's see what <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see what level thirteen brings. <laughs> yeah. You know what's, uh, you know what's, they shook the shit out of the board. And you know what's the craziest thing? That election. This is just how they work, right? They get crazier the closer you get to the actual. Well, that's, that's what's nuts. That's we're not even in October me. yet. We're not even there yet, dude. Well, I mean, Who, we're on fire. Our whole state's on fire. I'm, I might be like having to evacuate my house. Oh, like it's cr- just it's like natural disasters. Are like, hey, did you forget about us? Oh. Yeah, that's hey, dude. I, I want to ask you about that because I woke up this morning, went outside. To work out, you know, except to walk ash my, all over your car, all over my car. Yeah, mine, yeah too. mine too. I mean, obviously, but yeah, it was like we had to close all our windows because we we couldn't even like breathe. It's it's like unbearable all the smoke that's coming through. But it's it thankfully it's up kind of on the skyline, but it's starting to creep in real close to to our community. So we're on standby. It's like any moment we'll probably have to evacuate. But oh. uh, yeah, it's it's scary stuff. But it's just, I mean, it's just more. You know, it's like what else? What else? Like it's just so much stuff. Stuff. Well, on. speaking of natural disasters, did you see? You guys see what Google's doing with the whole like predicting earthquakes or whatever? I did what? read that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, How are they doing that? I basically, I, you know, if I read it right, it was like something about like how it, it actually like vibrates and moves, like Based specifically off of other people's other other, s- other cell phones. Yeah, and so they're, they're they're kind of like like taking that data from everybody's cell phones and then putting it together and seeing patterns with that in terms of like how it like vibrates and moves. Wow. Yeah. We haven't had a good, a big one in a, in a while, but I remember you guys were here. Were you guys in Cal- You guys were in California for the 89. Yeah, yeah, right? 89. Yep. I remember that because I, you know, you hear it before it hits. Oh, which yeah. is really frightening. I saw it before it, it actually came to me. Yeah. Did you really? Were you outside? Yeah, because I was outside playing soccer, and uh, you actually saw like you, it heard like a Mack truck was coming at us, but then you actually saw like the the ground start to roll, and then uh, a couple windows broke, and then it it caught us with the roll, and then it literally like almost threw me on the ground off balance. It was crazy. Wow, we, we, that was the ma- the massive massive one. But we had one not that long ago, maybe ten years ago. I want to say that was. I mean, I think it was like because that one was like a seven point something, right? Yeah, that was like a seven point. And we had three? like we had like a six something, not that. I mean, like a decade or so ago. In because I remember being in L.A. T- no, 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 I remember being in 24 Hour Fitness in, in San Jose, or maybe maybe San Jose felt the six of it. I don't know if it was LA okay. or where the, I don't remember where that. Yeah, because I don't think we had a six one that was here. We, we've had a big one here uh, not that long ago. It might, it might not be six one. It might have been five. I don't remember right, the right. exact number of it. But I, what I do remember was I remember sitting down at my desk in the gym, and you know, Santa Teresa has all those windows. Uh-huh. And to what you're talking about, you could see them flex. Yeah, they flex. And, and bow. Wobble. And then, yeah. That was weird. Then that it was so bad, they just explode. That was so weird to watch them they look like waves yeah the windows did and i remember tripping out sitting there watching that happen that was scary yeah it was i, I was sitting on the i was actually on the couch believe it or not you guys need to you know i don't know if you guys believe me watching the world series i had this world series on on uh, tv what I, yeah i was i was watching it and uh and because remember it was filmed on the, at the world well series. i went to the world series the, the game previous to that oh did you yeah and oh. we were supposed to go uh the the day that you know the the uh earthquake happened up in the nosebleeds oh wow. thank god i didn't do that well it threw me off the couch I, i'm watching tv and i flew off the couch and i just went back on the couch and just sat there and yeah. waited and yeah i was in the shower I fell, the bay. I fell in the shower you were I was, yeah i was in so i lived in when the the 89 one let's happened. see how old were you in 89 i was 10 I was so nine. you were you eight yeah and i was in the shower in in modesto so i know it was worse here in the bay area that's oh, the yeah. valley it's about an hour and a half mm-hmm. but it was enough to you know literally throw me across. i bounced off one side to the other <laughs> no, side and then fell. yeah i remember that as a kid yes downtown santa Cruz got decimated it was really bad yeah back then First question is from Shrumpf F836. Does wearing a weighted vest or a hoodie during cardio really make a difference in the amount of calories burned? Or is it like the oxygen restriction masks and just a person? But it does make you look way more serious than anybody else that you're running next and to. And that counts. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so, okay, so <laughs> ready. theoretically, a uh, weighted vest would make you burn more calories because there's resistance and it's harder. Uh, but it's not worth the trade-off. And what I mean by that is a weighted vest, weighting your body down, doing cardio, 
changes your movement patterns. If you're not used to moving that way, mm -hmm. injury is much higher. Uh, if you want to use weight, use weight for what it's used best for, which is resistance training. A hoodie is not going to improve your calorie burn. In fact, it may reduce your performance to the point where you actually burn less calories. But wearing a hoodie may help improve your ability to tolerate heat. So if you're trying to train yourself to be able to, let's say you're going to go hiking and it's going to get hot um, and you want to get better with heat tolerance, that may be one way to help yourself out is to, is to do cardio in a hot environment. Either heat up the room, uh, do it outside when it's really hot, or wear uh, clothing that makes you really hot, in which case you're training that, that you know, aspect of your body. But as far as calorie burn goes, you're going to do the best uh, in the best state, meaning the best performance well, with the best form uh, and the best technique. Yeah, unless you're like a soldier or unless you're right. like, a, you know, even for football, in some degree, you had uh, weighted equipment. And so I would consider certain things like that with uh, the style of training is very like specified. So if I'm if I'm doing sprints or doing anything, I'm trying to emulate uh, the amount of time I would be doing that in the game and the amount of weight I'd be carrying around my body. And so, you know, there's ways to kind of do that creatively and, and the weight vest might make sense in certain instances like that. But in terms of your everyday average person that's just trying to burn calories or get stronger, uh, you got to evaluate these things. They don't really have a lot of worth in that direction. I'm glad you said that because this is where I was going to go with that. This is, it only makes sense to me if you, if you are doing something where you are going to have some weight on your shoulders while you're performing an exercise or a sport. Um, other than that, uh, it's a classic example of how us silly fitness humans think that the, you know, the ultimate goal is just to make everything harder and that therefore it, it ends up being more results. And that's just how we, so many people train this way, you know, yeah. it's always intensity. If it's difficult, it's hard, more results. And it's not, uh, true at all. It's a much finer dance than that. And when you talk about the potential thermogenic effects, because you're heating up faster and your body is trying to cool down, like maybe getting more calories, that's all splitting hair bullshit. So anybody that tries to sell you on the idea that the vest or being all hoodied out is a better way for you to, or a faster way for you to get in shape or lean out or mm -hmm. lose body fat is just a bunch of bullshit. And the trade-off for like to Sal's point uh, earlier is it's just not worth it or it's and it's splitting hairs unless to Justin's point you are doing a sport where you would you know put on something that's weighted like shoulder pads or uh, do do the do some of the obstacle course races of have them do that I'm is not it, sure what's, what's rucking is it rucking oh yeah, yeah there you go rucking does that yeah. yes yeah so if you were doing like a go ruck race or something where you will ha you would have to have that or in CrossFit you train I think there's certain ones where I think the Murph, like you have to wear a vest mm. in or some shit like that. So if you're training for something specific to get better at doing whatever it is you're doing with yeah. a vest on, that makes sense uh, for all other Hunting. reasons. Yeah. yeah, for all other reasons, uh, yeah, not silly. It reminds me of like the, the the ab workouts you see on Instagram that are posted where the dude is doing like a leg raise or a sit-up. And someone's there, like punching them Blasting in the stomach, them. Yes. or yes. kicking them, or throwing a medicine ball yes. at yeah. their abs, and they're like, "Oh man, you got to try this. You really so much more. Effective. You really feel it more in your abs." You gotta, <laughs> they totally got that from boxers, and boxers do that because in boxing you get punched in the stomach. Yeah, you actually get punched. Yeah, there's so a real learn. Yes, there's a real application for them. Yeah, but for everybody else, you're just hurting, you're bruising your body. It's not yeah. helping you build your abs more. Yeah, yeah. Wearing a weighted Great vest analogy. is not going to help your you, your cardio or to burn necessarily more calories, not worth the trade, unless that's what you want to get good at, which is cardio with weights. Next question is from More Life Jojo. In a recent episode, you talked about the importance of introducing new exercises to elicit a new stimulus and to work muscles in a novel way. In previous episodes, you have mentioned that there is no need to confuse muscles and that progressive overload is the principle that will stimulate muscle growth. Can you elaborate, elaborate and clarify the difference between introducing new exercises for the sake of stimulating 
Ver- this question is Sal's fault because he says everything with so much conviction. <laughs> no, no, no. It seems like the only thing we're, we're like, confusing yeah, is the yeah, listeners. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 you that's say it with gonna, so much you're conviction. You're not listening. Yeah, you say it with so much conviction that they're like, wait a second, is that the truth no, or is that yeah. the truth? No, it's it's both. But first off, okay, right. the, the term confusing muscles is a marketing term. Hmm. Uh, muscles <laughs> don't get confused. Uh, I don't think they think that way. They're like, huh? Yeah, now what's yeah. going on? Okay, so there's a novel stimulus with changing exercises. But one thing you have to understand is there's this, this there's value that you get from exercises from learning to do the exercises well, and then the the results and the benefits you get from them actually increase as you're able to do them really, really well. So we'll use a complex exercise like a squat. When you start to learn how to do a squat, you do get some benefit. You learn how to squat better. You're getting your muscles to fire in better unison and better connections so that you can do the position better. Once you're comfortable with the actual movement of the squat, then you can add weight, then you can really build muscle, then you can really push yourself and get those great results. So there is a there is a dance between or a balance between new exercises and then getting to the point where you get good at them so you could push the intensity and challenge the the weight that you lift with those exercises. Those are both very important. If you just stick in one or the other, you're missing out. If all you ever do is switch up exercises all the time, you're going to miss out on all those amazing benefits you get from getting good at an exercise right. and really pushing yourself. If you only ever do the same exercises and you never add any novelty, risk of injury goes up, you can plateau, uh, and you can really get your body to to stop progressing because you're not introducing new movements. I think I remember when we we actually recently talked about this, and I think what, what this person's alluding to is when we were referring to like squats, deadlift, overhead press, and like that there's not much need to to move those out of your routine. Right. That And the, the reason for that is because those movements are so novel and so complex in themselves that you could spend the next four years squatting yeah. every other day. Good luck perfecting them. Exactly. Squatting every other day for the next four years and still not have a perfect squat. Mm. Uh, that is why that that make you know this uh, this question comes from I think that statement that we made in regards to that, uh, and so you know if you are just you just squatted for two weeks and you're like oh you know I you know I heard muscle confusion or we should do some other novel exercise and you eliminate squats and then you go put leg press or leg extension in there instead that's missing not a, yeah you're yeah. missing out I like to look at those staple exercises you just mentioned as sort of the benchmark like this is where I assess how my body is uh, reacting. And so like these little, uh, you know, micro compensations and things that are happening in my body is what's providing me feedback to then create opportunities for new novel stimulus to seek. So if, if, if my body tends to rotate just a little bit, you know, that's something I need to work on, you know, core control and, and stabilizing more properly and getting, making sure I'm anti-rotating. And so what are those exercises that I can incorporate in the program to now Dressed to then apply back to these, you know, foundational staple exercises that sort of are my legend. There, it's this is how I read my map. Yeah, short term, you want to stick to the same exercises. Long term is when you start to introduce uh, novelty with different exercises. So uh, here's a good example: if you were take, if you were to compare two types of workouts, both three months long, one focusing on the same ten exercises, the other one always mixing it up with a uh, hundred different uh, varieties of different exercises, okay? The one that stuck to just the 10, you'll get better results. Now, if we stretch this out over the course of a year or two years, and then we compare a workout that only uses 10 exercises to another one that uses, let's say, 30 exercises and throws in and changes things every few months or every you know, four months or so, then the one that's adding the novelty will start to you know, get better results. It, it's a, it's, it is a balance. But the important things to focus on are get good at the complex movements, do those ones often. All the other movements, I think you have a little bit more freedom to 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 change up. If you have if you have uh, some or most of our programs, uh, this is how they're written. Perfect. And you'll see that there is a you know we introduce lots of different uh, exercises and novel stimulus and different planes and like Justin's talking about rotational stuff that all gets introduced. But you'll also see. Through all of them, there is a common theme that we never we never abandon squats, we never mm-hmm. abandon overhead presses, we never abandon some of these 
fundamental movements that kind of belong in, in every single program, but there's still lots of room in a workout to still add a novel stimulus and different exercises for the, you know, quote unquote muscle confusion idea for you to do that, but still not stray away from the things that are giving you the greatest bang for your buck. Yeah. If you were to follow like our RGB bundle, for example, which is, has three maps programs and you go from one to the other, to the other. That's about nine months of uh, of workout programming, and it's got the it introduces new exercises at the right time, and it changes the focus just enough at the right time, and so your body progresses through that whole long period of nine months. Next question: Do pregnant women need to change the? Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, you know, obviously now Jessica's in her third trimester, um, and so we're you know, modifying her workouts accordingly. And I've trained a lot of pregnant women. I'm sure you guys have too. And really the key, first off, I, I want to talk about the, the most important, best thing you can do uh, to maintain strength and health during pregnancy is to set yourself up before you become pregnant. Yeah, I think that's every, it reminds me of talking to uh, people that want to get into competing, right? And they, they would try and hire me like, hey, I want to do a show in 12 weeks. Can I hire yeah. you to get me ready? And I'm like, the real work is done before you go into show prep, I think of pregnancy the same way. Like the real good work, if you want to come out the other end feeling great still and rebound well, is to put in the work before you actually get pregnant. Yeah, because you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get caught in the mindset and strategy of getting in shape while uh, yeah. also being pregnant. The key is to maintain fitness while pregnant and then to modify the workout to meet your your particular needs, your special needs as your body is changing. Now, let's just pretend we're talking about someone who isn't a complete beginner. We'll do that too. But let's start with someone who's not a complete beginner. They're relatively consistent with their workouts and they get pregnant. Okay, aside from energy levels and you know that kind of stuff, which in the first trimester can, uh, can vary wildly. I've trained women who felt absolutely terrible in the first trimester. And I've trained women who in the first trimester didn't notice uh, too much. Now, Jessica, she was in the first category. Energy was bad. She was nauseous, severely nauseous throughout the whole first trimester. Um, but a lot of women they also go into it and they're, they're mostly okay. First trimester, nothing really needs to change aside from considering your energy levels and, and how you feel. Your body isn't physically changing that much. Same thing for the most part for the second trimester. When you start to need to consider changes is when your belly really starts to grow and change because that will change muscle recruitment patterns. Mm -hmm. That will change body positioning. Um, you know, When the belly gets really big, split stance movements are almost always out of the question. Putting a one leg in front, now your belly's in the way. You can't do them. Uh, traditional squats are usually fine. Your legs are apart. You can the belly goes in between the legs. Traditional deadlifts usually not a good idea, um, although for some it is. Sumo deadlifts probably a better uh, idea. Core exercises first and second trimester totally fine. As the belly grows, you're going to stop doing you know flexion and extension of the spine. You're not going to be doing crunches uh, and that kind of stuff. But you can do rotation and you can do some mild stabilization. So like a plank is a great exercise for a pregnant woman. But even then, I would uh, I would caution you against doing planks towards the third trimester when the belly is getting really big because when you have a when things are stretching out, you start to lose connection to some of the muscles of your core. So if you do planks, what you're doing is you're really working the hip flexors. So I would modify it. I would modify it and say, okay, we're going to go and we're going to put your elbows up on a really high bench or maybe an extended plank on a bar and just brace your core just to keep things. Uh, activated. I like less direct stuff for core. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say I agree with you on everything. I did a couple different things, though. Even first trimester, uh, I kind of modified all the maps because Katrina is used to running all the maps programs, and uh, and most map maps programs are perfectly fine. Uh, but I, I modified it a little bit more by adding more like pelvic floor focus, so more mm -hmm. like floor bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, we did look little things like I would do like these long strided lunges with her, and then have her come up to a stabilization and actually tuck her tailbone so I, she would lunge, big long strides, balance, so you get the kind of stability part. So I would incorporate stability into other movements versus like direct core yeah. exercises like a plank. Um, I just found more value in that for her versus trying to do something. And, then, and especially as you start to get bigger with the belly, like you're saying, towards two and th third trimester, uh, doing planks like that, uh, I just think it, it, you could just incorporate stabilization into other movements. I did do a lot of sumo deadlifts, 
uh, goblet type squats um, uh, with her and a lot of hip thrust stuff. And then most everything else is like following like a maps program. And then the other, the other thing that I would always remind her is that, you know, and you alluded to it already, Sal is like, you know, we're not, we're not trying to make any gains during mm -hmm. this time. It's literally, we just want to maintain your health, maintain your strength, work on those pelvic floor muscles and, and stay healthy and stay active. So, you know, sometimes it was uh, walking in a mobility day, you know, I just, want to make sure that we're, we're staying active, that we're staying mobile. Um, but if your energy levels weren't there, I want to make sure you're getting good rest. I want to make sure that you feel good from your workouts. We're not trying to stress you anymore. So, you know, I just reminding Katrina, we, I took load off a lot of times. I would just tell her is like, you know, if she didn't feel great from the day before, like uh, Jessica, her first trimester was, you know, she was really tired. Really, really mm -hmm. tired. I remember her falling asleep on the couch next to me at like five, 6 PM at night, you know, never seen her do that mm -hmm. before. And so, you know, if she was coming into a workout and I knew she was, you know, fatigued or tired, you know, I would just a, a modify, say, hey, this is, you know, this is a day, let's go work technique. Yeah. Let's go real, real light, you know, like 30, 40% of the load for you. And, uh, you know, you really got to listen to your body. Yeah. And, and it was a similar case with Courtney in the first trimester, very tired. Um, and both pregnancies were different too. And so it produced a different type of energy that she was coming in with. And really the biggest key was to just keep moving and stay active and do things that were similar to what she was already doing previous to that. The third trimester was really the one that, you know, was the difficult one to make sure that, uh, because it's uncomfortable, the load is different. Uh, now we're accounting for all uh, these different recruitment patterns, like Sal's mentioning. So what I would do is like, yeah, hip bridging. I'd use the the stability ball a lot, you know, for that as well, uh, just for movement and rotation around with the hips and uh, being able to um, basically uh, balance and, and stabilize. It was big. And so I'd also have like a lot of the carries. And so in, instead of like doing a lot of very specific, uh, like lunging squatting, which we would do as well, but just a lot of carries to, to try and account for, uh, how to, how to, how to, how to basically stabilize the body when it's in a different load situation. I also had her doing a lot of Turkish get-ups. That was another thing I remember that mm, I yeah. added a lot into her. So more, more than any, even any, any of the maps programs that we have included, uh, that was kind of a staple move that, you know, her just practicing getting up off the ground and stabilizing something overhead. I mean, you get pelvic floor muscles in, involved in that. You get stability involved in that. You get her hip hinge in that. There's so many great things that you get from that movement. So just practicing the Turkish get up was a great exercise. By, by far, the best thing you could do uh, before, during, and after pregnancy is uh, strength training um, because it's going to give you a solid base from which you can lose strength from. Okay. Because here's what happens after pregnancy. You're not going to be moving much after you have your baby. You shouldn't, in fact. In fact, you should lay around, allow things to heal. Um, you don't want to develop uh, any issues. And, of course, when you do that, things start to atrophy. Well, if you go into that situation with strength and muscle, you're going to come out of it uh, much better. Like I said, I've trained lots of pregnant women, and uh, it's remarkable to see the difference in how quickly they rebound versus you know, people that don't do that kind of oh, training. Yeah. Now, what's the best program to follow? while you're pregnant? Well, um, it depends. If you're very consistent now, any of our MAPS programs, for the most part, are okay so long as they match your current fitness level. If you're unsure and you kind of want to be safe, MAPS Starter is excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. MAPS Starter is excellent post-baby. Uh, oh, yeah. That is the best program after you've had your baby. The, the emphasis on MAPS Starter is perfect for the pregnant woman. It's absolutely perfect. Here's something else to consider. When a woman is pregnant and going through that process, there's a, a, a hormone or chemical release called relaxin. And this loosens up your tissues and causes increased flexibility. Now, for obvious reasons, your body needs to do this. You're going to have a baby and you do want to be more flexible. But there is a potential dark side to this. If you don't have strength to support this increased flexibility, you actually can get some instability. And this is why sometimes pregnant women will get hip, pain and weird joint pain that they normally wouldn't get is because they've they're looser without more you know more strength this is where mobility real proper mobility can make uh, a, a huge difference the ability to continue to connect to muscles and, and to create greater ranges of motion with strength will really benefit you 
uh, during pregnancy. This is why I included what I said first, which is the the long strided lunges with the tucking the tailbone at the Connect. top and stabilizing. Like, and that there was a lot of emphasis on every stride when she'd come up to a balance tuck the tailbone, stabilize for a second, then go into the next lunge. And so we're working that deep full range of motion that she's probably finding a new new there, but have control mm. and then stability in it. And that that, that was something which now, she did all the now time. Now I want to add something else. I know that you didn't ask about nutrition, but I think this is important. A couple foods you want to look at. Uh, egg yolks, extremely um, beneficial, typically for pregnant women. High levels of choline. The cholesterol in the egg yolks is phenomenal for brain uh, and neural development. Um, uh, organ meats also look into organ meats. I know first trimester, everything's disgusting, so it might not be the best time to, to try, but if you can, organ meats, very high in nutrients and pregnant women tend to lean towards things like anemia and the iron that you get from organ meats is very absorbable, far less likely to cause constipation, which also tends to be a problem with pregnant women. So rather than take an iron pill that can cause constipation, which can cause other issues, Eat something like chicken liver um, and then gauge that depending on what your blood tests uh, will say, which you'll probably get because you go to the doctor and they'll tell you iron is here and you know here's where your, 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 here's where your, your levels are. So maybe you can eat this much liver or that much liver. Those two nutritional uh, foods that I recommended I think are important for most pregnant women. Next question is from Kim Geddes. When the pandemic is finally over, what will be the first thing each of you do? That you have fine dining, really? Yeah, Ooh. nice like a you know white tablecloth, expensive dinner where we're sitting in a nice restaurant, candlelit type of deal like that. I haven't had something like that on that or a movie. Yeah. What a concert! Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had like so many lined up this year too. It was like really frustrating. <laughs> yeah, that might I might be right there with you too on that because we do a lot of concerts and live like I have a live sporting event too. I missed yeah, the live shit out sporting. Of that. I that that totally like th all this stuff like made me appreciate sports even more now. Like mm -hmm. I like I've I've been drawn back just because I can't have it. You know, right. it's, it's made it even more of a bummer now that uh, you know we're not seeing that as much anymore. Yeah, I've um, just to help myself mentally with the whole thing. I've accepted that. It it won't. And I don't mean that the pandemic won't be over, but that the that our life will probably never uh, be like it was before. So I think that moving ahead five years from now, 10 years from now, you're just going to see people wearing masks. It's going to become an, a normal thing. Uh, it's going to feel, you already feel the social shame if you don't wear a mask, even if you're out in an open field all by yourself. You can feel people looking at you like, what yeah. are you doing? What are you What are you feeling the most? Because Justin says concerts, I say sporting events, fine dining. I feel like you don't really do any of those things. Oh, I love fine dining. Movies. Oh, okay, movies. I love going oh, to the movies, yeah. man. In fact, Movie I was- So is that what you feel the most? I think so, dude. I think I would like to go to the movies, but I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. You know what I mean? I don't know what things are going to look like, but uh, movies I miss. I love sitting in the theater with the sound and the, just the whole experience. Um, and anticipating a good movie. Fine dining is, is fun. I enjoy doing that. We do that every, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'd say every few months we'll go to a really nice restaurant and just have that whole experience. Don't like concerts, could care less about sporting events, not that big of a deal. Um, maybe go to you know a busy park or beach. I feel like it's so weird. Yeah, have you guys gone to the, done something outdoor like that and oh, seen yeah. people around you mass? It's such a oh, strange... Yeah, it's uh well yeah because the the beach is open and it's I mean everybody's pretty much keeping to themselves in terms of distance but you'll see some beaches where they're just like everybody's clustered together and it's like that makes me super anxious you know it's like walking through that you know and I I love working out in my garage but I I have to say now that I think about it I think a good workout and a big you know like Iron Dungeon gym with other I'm, people. I miss that a little bit. Yeah, I miss yeah. the gym a little bit. Like uh, you, I've gotten really used to training from home and training from our studio uh, for the in the last year or so. Um, and I've, I think I was the one who vocalized liking working in the gym more. But it's been nice having our own place. But I do miss that, I, and I feel the difference. Like I, I definitely get an, an extra level of motivation training in a place where there's lots of other people training. I, you know. No, I missed uh, uh, Disneyland. That's that was a thing. It was like it was almost on a once a year kind of kind of a, a schedule at this point. Like we've been going the last like three years, I think once, and uh, that was something that like the kids, of course, uh, always look forward to. And then you see a, them experience it in a different way each time as they're older. 
Uh, and so you get to kind of like, cause you know, my youngest will now get to go on the crazier ride and then, yeah. you know, and then see their faces. They're like, I, I like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I was too early kind of a thing. <laughs> like I did that a few times and like, you know, at the end their face just ghost white, yeah. you know, and I'm like, Oh wow. That was awesome. Huh, buddy? Like, ah! you, you, you know, what's really weird to me is that, so the, the way that I was raised in, in our culture and also our, the culture of my family. When you see family members, uh, when you first see them and you greet them or when you say goodbye, we kiss each other. Uh, that is really weird to me. Now, if I see family members, we all say hi, but nobody does the kiss anymore. And that's really strange. It's a very, very weird thing. I almost feel like it's. I feel like we're not connected. No, like that's we a weird did. thing for yeah. me. I'm like I'm a, a hugger. Yeah, I'm a touchy feely person in general. If you have friends, You're family, not rubbing everything. ears right now. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's just weird when you ha like if you haven't seen anybody. Like let's say we, I mean we just he ran into that. Aaron. We hadn't seen Aaron in you know I don't know maybe half a year or whatever. So it's weird when you see someone who you haven't seen in a while, and that the natural thing you always would do is give them a big hug or a handshake or you know or a kiss on the cheek, whatever. Like. To, there's always this weird uh, moment when we get to, when you get to, what do we do yeah yeah it's like hey hey yeah you can yeah. You, you walk towards each other and then you stop when you feel like it's about six feet like, and then you're like are hey, they gonna fist bump hey, yeah. or are we just gonna air high five like what <laughs> yeah. are we doing here that's yeah. awkward yeah. look mind pump is recorded on video as well as audio come check us out on youtube you can also find all of us on instagram even doug in fact doug has an instagram page where he goes behind the scenes and shows you how we make our podcast the inner workings you can find doug at mind pump doug you can find justin at mind pump justin you can find me at mind Pump Sal and Adam, you can find him at Mind Pump Adam. You know, finding ways that I can teach a client and, or show them something so they can feel what I'm trying to explain right now. Because what we just talked about can be very nuanced for the average lifter who who's like doesn't care that much about the science. They just want the damn results. And so I'm always as a trainer thinking of like, how can I like get them to feel what I'm trying to